Welcome back. My name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, a TV and film podcast. We do all kinds of things. We're mm. talking Star Wars, House of the Dragon, uh, other stuff. And we do it with the help of math and a spreadsheet. Every time. We look at our batting averages, and that's what makes us so successful. You're more of a sheets guy than an Excel. <laughs> I'm freaking the sheets is what they call me. That's what they call him, <laughs> but they mean Apple Sheets. Google Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> not Apple Sheets. Could not help but think of you spread out on my spreadsheets. That's right, baby. Uh, today, though, is one of our patron demanded movies from beloved patron Amanda King. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to patreon.com slash streaming things occasionally uh, at a certain tier, you'll have the ability to mandate, obligate that we cover a certain movie. And Amanda has chosen Moneyball. Moneyball. From 2011. Uh, we are fresh back from our South by Southwest trip, a little addled. Mm, these um, dogs are a barking. They, I have not recovered yet. <laughs> I haven't either. I think I've literally just sat on my couch nonstop since I've gotten back from our trip. Good for you, though. Yeah. I know you have like real person and responsibilities <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm going to be a fat piece of shit. <laughs> I'm going to do my job of the hut cosplay on my couch. Thursday, I deep cleaned the house, uh, swept and mopped when I got home and unpacked everything. Friday, uh, I had to go back to work and it's literally burning down and <laughs> not literally. That's, that's where that's not, how I use that word. It is metaphorically burning down mm -hmm. figuratively, virtually, um, practically. And then Saturday, uh, yeah, children's hospital and, um, and Phantom Menace and stuff. And I watched Starship Troopers on Friday. That was fun. That was a good, <laughs> that was a respite. <laughs> Got like three videos due tomorrow. I'm freaking out a little bit. I'll be honest with you. I believe in you. <laughs> I believe in you, my man. But I, I was excited to revisit Moneyball. Um, go to streamingthingspod.com to find all of our old episodes and uh, email us at, email us at streamingthingspod at gmail.com. If you don't have the money to support us financially, that's completely understandable. What you can do that's very helpful is to rate and review the show wherever you're listening to this, be it Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any of the other various and sundry apps. That's very helpful to help bump us up in the algorithm because mm -hmm. uh, we've got some big stuff coming down the pipeline Maybe some minor changes. We've had some curveballs. Yo, a sports metaphor. If you will, thrown our way. I know we've been uh, touting our, our fallout coverage dropping soon, which I still hope that there's a universe in which that happens. But we're pretty uh, upset, to be honest with you guys. Uh, yeah. I know that our main fans listen to these like Moneyball type episodes. So that's why I saved it for this. Um, yeah, they're going to drop every single episode of Fallout in one day. Uh, which is sucks for us, <laughs> not our style anymore. If you guys recall, that's how Stranger Things operates. And that's a nightmare for us. We stay up all night and we talk Stranger Things into the wee hours of the next day. Mm -hmm. And uh, funny twist, those don't do well, even though that's how hard we used to work. Like the only reason Stranger Things 4 jumped in massive popularity as much as it did on our show is because I believe there was a split in that season and people were craving more. Um, so I think by doing that fallout has just fucked over any podcasters or ancillary content and therefore their own show. Um, so and it sounds like they don't, the word coming out of it is there's not a lot of confidence in the show, which is strange because the trailers look great. It, everything about it seems good. Jonathan Nolan's involved. If I, if I'm yeah, correct, you're correct. Uh, which is uh, usually a good sign. So I'm still really excited for the show, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be worth us b breaking our backs covering the show for something everybody's going to binge and forget about in a week. And then we're going to be stuck yapping about it to nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the big comeback I was hoping for. So I don't know, but we're still doing the boys season four for sure. We're doing House of the Dragon season two for sure. Uh, hilariously, the Bear Season 3 and Acolyte drop that same month I know. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which are shows we would have covered, but we'll be busy doing the other things. And I don't know. So uh, we're talking. And I know I'm Steve hates when I yap like inside butt baseball. Inside butt? <laughs> <laughs> um, Boy, I love it when you yap inside butt. But what, what we've been discussing is maybe doing Game of Thrones Season 1 for Patreon only. Um, and I don't know what else we would do instead of Fallout. Uh, in, the, in the interim uh, leading up to June, but we'll figure it out. We're, we're currently back to the drawing board, as the Brits would say, because mm -hmm. they say drawing. Drawing. They do. I don't know why they do that. Uh, colonialist speak, I guess. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a wild week for your boys at streaming things. We're fresh, like we we're said, we're, we're, we're fresh out of coming back from South by Southwest. There's actually a lot of stuff that happened 
in the back end of the podcast that I need to look into, but like I wasn't able to while we were gone at South by Southwest. So hopefully I'll be able to fix some of those changes. Some episodes are missing mm. in our catalog. And so I have to track those down and re-upload them and see. Like which Lord one. of the Rings even too, right? Yeah. Like old Stranger Things episodes. There's, there's a, I have to have to sit. And I love that people everything. listen to the show so religiously that they would notice that. I know, like, because I wouldn't have noticed it. Like, like hey, I season just, two, episode four is gone. And like, yeah. why were you listening to that? <laughs> <laughs> I love that for them. That's amazing. It's just one of those things where, like, in a perfect world, when you switch podcasting hosts, like we did from Spotify, we switched to a different one called Acast. All that stuff is automated and in the background, but sometimes stuff just doesn't quite transfer over. Mm-hmm. But it's we wouldn't know about it because we're so busy making the content currently. Yeah. Uh, that we wouldn't know about it until someone like pipes up and says, hey, I was trying to listen to this episode and it's missing. So we hear you because we've gotten a couple emails about that. I hear you. I just wasn't able to do anything to fix that while we were away at South by Southwest. Uh, so I'm going to try to get some of that stuff rolled out over the over this week. You know, and as Socrates said, uh, it bees like that sometimes. It bees like that sometimes. Wise words. From high on the mount. From, some, from someone who knows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Moneyball, if you're familiar with our show, you know what's about to happen. Uh, we're going to talk about our history with this movie, if we've seen it before, and what it was like watching it this time. And then we'll do our best to do kind of a scene by scene recap. But I, I really don't think this is the type of movie where that would be very entertaining. But we'll we'll talk about our favorite moments and things that happened throughout the film for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Steve, I, by the way, I wanted Andy to be on this episode so badly because he's a huge baseball fan yeah uh, it would have been nice to have someone who's a a, a huge baseball fan and or B, a fan like, at all knows about the ins and outs ha ha ins outs mm, outs for sure but outs. not ins ah uh, see <laughs> this is why we need Andy that's right <laughs> yeah because I'm sure there were liberties taken with the events of what actually happened and mm-hmm. Um, you know, characters molded together, things, these kinds of things. I, I, in fact, I got a comment on my letterbox that I thought was curious. I'm not to call you out because this is a, a I don't want to say fan of mine, but it, it's somebody who interacts with me fairly often that I, I enjoy. You know what I'm saying? You enjoy the interactions. Uh, I do. I do. But it, it's worth note. And that's what made me think about having Andy on the show. Because, uh, again, we have no idea. I'm zero. Uh, None. What's going on here? None. But I wrote my fond thoughts of this film and he said, uh, you know, hey, no offense, but the script isn't nearly as good when you know more about baseball, sabermetrics and the Oakland A's. And I assume what this person means by that uh, is that there were liberties taken, like certain things happened elsewhere in life that didn't happen uh, with the Oakland A's. Or I don't even know what sabermetrics is, but I I don't care. The only thing that I know for sure, like I did a little bit of research I did my own research, Chris. Good. Uh, You're on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, I'm on Facebook. I did my own research. No, the only the only thing there was a lot of stuff that I, I wasn't gonna get into the 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 minutia of saber and baseball, because I knew that like even if I read the right thing, I would probably regurgitate it incorrectly because that's how, you know, terrible I am at sports stuff. But I I did know that in the movie it makes it seem like Brad Pitt's character, uh Billy, Billy Bean. Billy Bean is a lonely divorcee where actually like in the, he was actually he remarried and there was actually scenes filmed with, a, with, with, with his current wife that they ax from the final film. But he's wearing a wedding ring throughout yeah. the movie. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's one thing I kind of picked up. What's that have to do with sabermetrics? No, I'm saying like th- that's an example of the movie, not probably being mm. as accurate to the full story as it might be. Yeah. That we don't know for sure. Cause of our relationship to the sport, the sport, the sport, but Steve, this is the first time you watched Moneyball, right? It is the first time I watched Moneyball. What was your experience like? Well, before we get into my experience, Chris, I want to read to you what Amanda King wrote. About why terms of they chose this movie. Why they chose Moneyball what as a good their idea. chosen film. And it's quite a lovely story. Um, it's a little longer, but I think it's, it's worth hearing out. Uh, Amanda King writes, Kit and Steve, thank you for taking the time out of your crazy busy lives to review one of my favorite movies, Moneyball. After being a patron for over a year and fretting over which movie to ask you to watch, I settled on this one because of how much I know you two love baseball. Uh, And then she put in an angel emoji. Mm. I think she's being facetious. (laughs) In all seriousness, this was a tough decision. I had 13 different movies I was trying to decide from. I finally narrowed it down to Moneyball and Juno. Hmm. To avoid beating a dead horse, I chose Moneyball. 
growing up, I had two Silencio, old man. <laughs> she <laughs> Amanda King always sends that gift to me in the discord and it cracks me up every goddamn time because you just I'm like, hey, guys, a new poll on Patreon drop. Silencio, old man. <laughs> like every time it gets me. Uh, she, she continues, growing up, I had two older brothers who are eight and 10 years older than I am. Needless to say, we had nothing in common, and I essentially spent the first 20 years of my life feeling like an only child. It wasn't until my then boyfriend, now husband, took me to a Milwaukee Brewers game. Baseball was never a game I understood, but going to that game, feeling the electricity of the crowd, eating the brat and drinking the overpriced beers, oh, and witnessing a walk-off home run, I understood. Ever since, I've become mildly obsessed with baseball, and it has been the perfect bonding tool to have with my brothers and also my dad. I acknowledge that there are probably superior baseball movies, but to me, this is my favorite by a mile. I love the true story behind it. I love Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill's chemistry. I love the score. I love that they insert real footage of these games. I love the overall look of the movie. It reminds me so much of another Sorkin movie that's a favorite of mine, The Social Network. We've covered that one on Patreon. Damn right. It makes you see all the behind the scenes bullshit these players, coaches, and owners go through. That it's more than just swinging a bat or throwing a ball. It's an overwhelming institution with an infinite number of positive and negative outcomes. It can be joyous one day and heartbreaking next. Like Billy Bean says, how can you not be romantic about baseball? How can you not? That is why Amanda chose this movie. And I, I really appreciate that story of... Um, you know, finding some way to connect with her elder brothers. Like I, myself am the youngest child, my brothers and sisters are 12 and 14 years older than I am. So oftentimes it can feel a little hard to connect with them, especially my brothers. And so like, I appreciate, I'm really happy for you, Amanda, that you were able to find that thing to really kind of bring it home as, 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 as the baseball Pete kids say, bring it home. Mm -hmm. Are they bring it home. I think that's what they okay. say. All right. The I haven't talked to the baseball kids in a while. <laughs> <laughs> baseball kids. What are you saying nowadays? Oh, I struck out with them. Mm. Ah. Ah. <laughs> We're going to keep bringing those metaphors back. Yeah, we are. Touchdown. Mm -hmm. Yep. Goalie. It's a three pointer. Mm. From free throws. Yeah. Birdie. <laughs> birdie. <laughs> but as an avid baseball fan, what was it? You know, did you enjoy your experience? Yeah, so if you don't, if you guys don't know, I famously hate baseball. Like, I, <laughs> I feel so bad every time this topic comes up because there's a lot of people in the Discord who are avid baseball fans. They talk about it in our Discord channel under the Sports Ball channel. Shout out to the Sports Ball channel. Mm. And I always feel bad shitting on baseball because it's America's pastime, right? Like every How can you not be romantic about baseball? How can you not be romantic about baseball? Well, easily. I'm never romantic about baseball. I mm. fucking hate it. Um, <laughs> part of it is because I live very, very close to a baseball stadium. And whenever there is a baseball game, it fucks up with the traffic in my immediate area. And it's hard for me to get anywhere because of the baseball games. And I don't know if you know this, Chris, but baseball... The season of baseball lasts forever. I think maybe a Catholic wedding is the only thing that lasts longer than the season of baseball. Yeah, it's like a, it's like 180 games or At, something. To what end? I say to what end? <laughs> what are we even doing here? Statistics. When, when you play the same team like 10 times over the course of a season, what are we even doing here? Yeah. Um, so I'm not a huge baseball fan. You know what? I'm not also not a fan of. Um, a lot of things, a lot of but things, specifically maths. Ah, I hate math. It was my least favorite subject. So when this movie came across my desk as one, we'd have to, to, to watch a movie about baseball where they solve the problem of baseball with the power of math and Excel spreadsheets. I was not looking forward to this at all. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I was really kind of like, ah, I don't know. Cause I've never seen this before. Cause why would I, when it came out in what, 2010? Yeah. I, I was just kind of like 2011. 2010, 2011, whenever it came out, I, I remember it coming out and being like, well, that's a movie I never have to bother watching. That's not for me, clearly. Mm -hmm. And so I finally sat down and watched it. It was not uh, painful like I thought it would be. Like I was really thinking this was going to be like a, a very painful sports and math thing. It is a sports and math thing, but it wasn't painful. But at the same time, I just feel nothing for it. I think we were talking before the mics went on and you had said that you think this is a five star movie. And I was like, yeah, it's a good movie, but I have, I'm at a severe disadvantage. And I think it's unfair that I am reviewing this movie for Amanda because I, I, I understand why people love baseball and how you can 
It, it, for, if you love it, I can. it's easy to romanticize baseball, right? Like, I think that's a very true sentiment. But because I'm so far removed from the game, I'm not a fan of it. I don't know any, I don't know the ins and outs of baseball. There are times in this movie where I'm fucking lost. I'm so confused as to what's happening. But that's not the movie's fault. I think it's just because I'm, I'm so far removed from the culture. Like, I just so many things go over my head. Like when the ending of the movie happened, I was so shocked and flummoxed that it ended when it ended because I didn't understand what was happening. I literally had to rewind and rewatch the last 10 minutes of the movie because I, honest to God, thought I missed something and that the movie skipped. Like I thought we were letting into the third final act where like, oh, they're on this hot streak. Ah, they lost the hot streak. That's that's a bummer, but hey, they're gonna go to the the finals, right? And go to that big game that Billy wants to win. Oh, well, they're not even doing that. They lost. That was the hot streak. They lost. Oh, well, f- fuck. Like that's that's how the movie felt when it ended to me. So I was just kind of like, okay, uh, that was a movie I watched. So I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a bad movie. I think there's a ton of talent on screen. Um, I mean, Sorkin's amazing. Brad Pitt's great in the movie. Jonah Hill's in great in the movie. Um, Chris Pratt's there and, <laughs> and I, I do like some of the, the, the things they say about the culture and the institutional systems that are in place in baseball at that time and why they felt the need to change it. It's honestly one of those things where they, they posit this concept of like, Hey, these are the statistics. These are the, the actual numbers on the board that these players bring. We want to base who we get off of those statistics, whereas the old school guys are like, I think he's got an ugly girlfriend. Yeah, right. It means he's got poor decision. Like we don't like to me, that was so weird. And like, wait, was it really like that? That seems so stupid. Like t- to the point where I know we're so it's you know 25 years since this, the events of this was supposed to take place, right? It was around the early 2000s when Yeah, it was like right after 9-11. Yeah. I, 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 so a long time has passed since those events took place. And I'm sure that's how it was maybe, but it was so like, why are they worried about that shit? Like, why aren't they worried about confidence? Yeah. Like, why are they worried about that stuff and not worried about the actual points they're putting on the board? To me, it was such a, why is this a problem? But again, that's because I'm not in the culture and the zeitgeist. I wasn't there when it happened. I, it means nothing. I have no relevant or, um, uh, relation to it. So for me, I was just kind of like, why is this a story? This seems so obvious that he's right. What <laughs> is this really what people were thinking 20 years ago? That's madness to me. But what do you think of the movie? Because you said it was a five star movie. I love this movie. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a fan of baseball, uh, but I am a fan of movies and I'm a huge fan of writing. This is an Aaron Sorkin script uh, co-written with two other, uh, I'm sure, distinguished gentlemen. Uh, Steven Soderbergh was originally going to direct this movie mm-hmm. um, and did not. Apparently he had um, Dimitri Martin cast as Jonah Hill's character. That, That's I, wild to me. I'd have been sold on that. I would have been sold, but isn't that wild? <laughs> he just pulls out two markers and starts. <laughs> <laughs> He's just doing his act. <laughs> <laughs> to do the spreadsheet. Yeah. Uh, this film was nominated in 2012 at the 84th Academy Awards for six Oscars, including Best Picture, but also Best Supporting Actor for Jonah Hill, Best Actor for Brad Pitt, Best Adapted Screenplay, because uh, it was a, a nonfiction book on which this is based of a real event, and then best editing and best sound mixing. It lost all of those awards. And if you dig around, that was a weird year at the Oscars. It was the year where the artist won Best Picture, the uh, silent film. Yeah. Nominated alongside Hugo, the Scorsese film, mm-hmm. uh, Tree of Life, the Malick film, and then Woody Allen's Midnight in Paris, The Help, uh, Extremely Loud, Incredibly Close, and Steven Spielberg's War Horse. Uh, That's a weird year. It's a weird fucking year. And like, so they lost, uh, he was never nominated for best director, but they lost best actor to Christopher Plummer from Beginners. He lost a best supporting to uh, Alexander Payne's The Descendants, who was nominated this year for The Holdovers. Um, It just seems like it's a bunch of movies no one talks about anymore. So I think they made some mistakes. Yeah. Um, Midnight in Paris, as much as you hate Woody Allen, you're 100% valid for that. That's one of the only... Woody Allen movies I've ever seen. And I, I do like that movie. Uh, but I, I did watch The Descendants. I have no memory of it. Um, the Ides of March was nominated that year. Do you remember that? Movie? I remember The Ides Ar- of March with Clooney. Yeah, with the Cloonster. Uh, just a weird fucking year. Um, this was the year that Girl with the Dragon Tattoo came out, which should have been in the running uh, in the Best Picture race, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, it, I just wanted to point out that like of all the movies we still talk about that were like highly lauded this year, 
I, I really think Moneyball is at the top of all of these movies. Watching it on the plane, because I did watch it on the plane coming back from South by Southwest. It's probably the fifth time that I'm watching this movie. I don't know if you noticed because you were watching Avatar The Last Airbender and you had your headphones in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't out me like that. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off. Oh, yeah, you were. Repeatedly, like loudly, like on a quiet plane. So it was like, <laughs> and then like I'd look around like, oh, yeah, nobody else can hear this. There's, there's no one. <laughs> You're just like pointing at your yeah. phone. Like, you guys seeing this? <laughs> shit? Holy shit. Jonah Hill, he's going to be a star. Lady in row four. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, but also crying. You know, I, I think I don't even think it's a movie. And that's the genius of Aaron Sorkin. He he kind of uh, he's he's well known for these like people in rooms talking mm -hmm. um, and 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 being a dynamo at that. And this is to full effect in Moneyball. But it it reminds me of uh, a movie like The Big Short, uh, and even from last year, a movie called Blackberry, which I highly recommend. These are movies that take inherently inane, boring subjects and make them insanely entertaining stuff that I don't care about at all. I don't, I'm not the type that knows anything about what caused the housing crisis in 2008. I'm not a stock broker. I'm not a realtor. I don't, it's, it's, it's a, a, a circle, you know, if it was a Venn diagram of shit I care about and shit I don't, it would just be a circle of shit I don't care about, you know? Mm -hmm. And yet I'm invested in this, like the big shorts, an incredible movie. Now they yeah. utilize Margot Robbie in a bathtub, which is effective to explain <laughs> And maybe we could have used a little of that in Moneyball for Steve. A little margarita in the bathtub, yeah. Because <laughs> um, I love The Big Short. The Big Short's great. I love that movie. Yeah. I, I, I think Moneyball moves at a clip. I think it's fucking brisk and entertaining that, and wonderful. That is true. That is something that I noticed that this is a like a two hour and 10 minute movie. Yeah, maybe 220. Something, something like that. And when the movie, like literally the movie did end. You were and shocked. I, and I was shocked. I'm like. Wait, I love that, that you don't end? know that when you lose in the playoffs, you don't get to play anymore. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> well, the thing, I, I didn't pick up on the fact that they lost in the playoffs. I thought they just lost their streak and like, ah, I'm sad about my streak yeah. being over. I yeah, didn't they, know that was the end of the season. Yeah. When they got the 20th win in the movie, the next game was a playoff game, you know, so oh. it was do or die at that point. They were going to go all the way or not. And what what resonates with me so much about this movie is the whole emotional crux of like that metaphor works for me. And I can understand if it doesn't for you when Jonah Hill takes him into the video room and he shows him their, their minor league player who's scared to run to second base. And he shows that whole bit about how he slips and falls. It's all his worst nightmares come to life because he finally tried. He knew it was going to happen and it happened. And he's so busy with all the stress and anxiety and honestly, self-absorption and selfishness that he doesn't even know he just hit a home run, you know, and he mm -hmm. looks right at Billy Bean and, that's a metaphor, which is hilarious. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I, I get it, man. I get it. Uh, that and that's the little bits that really take it from four to five to me. Are little touches like that, like it's a metaphor. Um, but I can relate to that so much. You know, I'm so busy, just fucking worried about a bunch of shit that doesn't matter. And my obsession is what makes me good at what I do. But at the same time, it hinders any satisfaction I could derive from being good at what I do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Billy Bean, I like that they removed his wife and stuff from this movie. Because uh, you hate women. That's a weird sentence. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it highlights, uh, it makes it look like he's just completely has no personal life. Uh, he has no joy or satisfaction outside of the little bit of time he spends with his daughter. He's just obsessed with this thing. And to 99 out of 100 people, he's already won. Like he's living in a big house in California. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like he's got a cool job. He's traveling all over the country all the time. When? What a what a W, the kids would say. And, and he just seems like a miserable fuck who can only look at that he's at the poor team. Now, the poor team still spends $40 million a season. <laughs> yeah. So to most people, you know what I mean? Like, it's funny. And it, yeah, I, there, there is a part where he's talking to the uh, one of the more veteran players. And he's like, David I, Justice, I think I'm important. You guys are paying me seven million dollars. Yeah. And he's like, well, the Yankees are paying three point five million. And, and just kind of funny, like, why are we like, oh, no, oh, no the, the guy who shouldn't play baseball anymore is making seven million dollars a year. Oh, I feel so bad for him. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's funny to like to, to normies. Right. Um, but I, that's what I think the movie's about is. um passion and uh you know staying in the moment and that bit at the end i always cry like a baby when he's listening to his because i you know i have kids i don't feel like i spend enough time with 
but also that his daughter is aware that that's her dad's sticking point and just wants him to enjoy his life. And so she sings him that song. You're a loser, you know, (laughs) (laughs) just enjoy the show, dude. You know, and I'm going to cry right now. Like I fucking love that. Like, I'm not going to be the biggest podcast in the world. I'm not going to be a famous actor. I'm probably never going to sell a screenplay. I might. I'm going to keep trying. But if I do, I'm not going to be Aaron fucking Sorkin. And just because I'm the main character in my show. You're going to be Kit Laser, baby. It's okay. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like my life, if nothing cool ever happened to me on top of all the cool shit that's already happened to me, my life is still better. No offense. Than most people. (laughs) I'm glad you qualified. No offense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's people who are listening. Like, oh, <laughs> sir, I doth protest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Though, like that's a healthy way to try to be. Um, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but that's what I see in this movie. That's what I love about it. I don't give a fuck that it's actually about this. It is fascinating to me that the, this changed the dynamic of how baseball teams were run, and that I get to see a lot about how baseball teams are managed because you think of I at least I'll speak for myself I thought of it as coach players training pick players choose players fire players sure but there's like the fact that he is the the general manager above the coach mm-hmm. who is in charge of cutting these players and drafting these players and then but he the seemingly has job, no power over the coach at the same time right mm-hmm. in that sense and the coach's job is to just choose of those 25 people who to play and how to play them um you know, that's all interesting to me. Whether or not that's even fucking true doesn't matter. It's just really fascinating to me. Because um, I've lived long enough to know that even the artistic things, the romantic things, there's a business side to them. Yeah. I know a lot about the business side of making a movie uh, and what's involved. And uh, that you might not think, you just think director directs things, the writer writes it. Definitely not how that works. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's probably 10 people that took a pass at a given screenplay that aren't credited. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, And so there's the, to see the business of baseball outside of the athleticism is interesting to me. Wasn't even the Sorkin script for this movie based off someone else's script. And he was like, I'll only do punch-ups on this. If, uh, if that, that dude's still credited. Because they were originally not going to credit that person. I don't know that story, but I mean, Stephen Zalian and Stan Chervin have credits yeah. on this script. I don't know who originally wrote it first, but you can see the the Sorkin punch ups all over it. Um, and then, yeah, you've got Brad Pitt is a and Jonah Hill are both controversial figures now, but they're both really fucking charismatic on a screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and same, I mean, honestly, everybody in this movie is problematic as shit nowadays. Cause then you got, uh, dare you talk about Robin, Wright, Chris like Pratt <laughs> <laughs> and then Robin, Wright Just off to the side, but and they're then, all and great to watch. And they're at f- just firing on all cylinders. In this I was movie. having a, uh, a good time with like the ancillary characters popping up. Like Chris, like Chris Pratt jump scare. Like, Oh my God, mm-hmm. this is, this must've been the first skinny Chris Pratt movie. Cause this was right, right around the time that. He lost all that weight. I well, think it's, it's for this movie. Yeah. Did you know that story? Oh yeah. I did read that where like they, they didn't they cast kept him telling him he was too fat. And yeah. He, so he kept working out and sending them photos of himself. Like, did you cast it yet? And like, he really wanted this role. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is like right after parks and rec. I wonder what specifically about this role. Like I would ask him that if there was like a Q and a, like what is about this role specifically that made you want to work that hard for not to say like, this is a bullshit role. I'm just interested to see like, I would, if I had to guess, uh, it's a big drama penned by Aaron Sorkin starring Brad Pitt. And, and he, he wants wanted to, to get more, of, taken more seriously outside of, yeah. Outside of parks and rec and all that. Didn't guardians of the galaxy come out this year? No, it was like 2014, I think 2013 really? or 2014. Yeah. So it was like this, Probably helped him get that role. Yeah, that's, yeah, probably because they're like, oh my gosh, you are skinny. <laughs> get some People mu- are pieces of shit. Get some mon- m- muscle the, on that. He always looked good, by the way. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Andy it came Dwyer? out in August of 2014. Dude, I would. What did you? I, what I, would you do? I, Go I would, on. I would ask Andy Dwyer out on a date. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, like having Robin Wright pop up. But you'd be was, fighting with Aubrey Plaza, which you'd lose. I, well, she would definitely <laughs> kill me for sure. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, seeing Robin Wright pop up was a joy. I loved seeing Philip Seymour Hoffman pop up. Philip Seymour Hoffman is my favorite him. actor. Like this I movie. I love him so much. This is my movie. And like he, you know, when celebrities pass away, it's always sad. But when I remember when Philip Seymour Hoffman passed away, I really felt like we lost something as a culture. Like we did. We lost a huge 
just present in the acting scene and that it's so tragic. So whenever I see a new movie with him in it that I've never seen before, I get really happy because it's like I'm he's still around. Even if he's a grumpy butt. I I love grumpy butt. See Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> Let me see that grumpy butt. No, I I wept when he died, obviously yeah. as, a, as an addict that hit me harder, but I, I still occasionally cry when then, I see him on screen. And then I, you probably won't, you know, speak to this as much as I did, but I kind of geeked out even when fucking Glenn Morshower popped up as one of the... Who's that? Uh, he's like a balder guy. He pops up in like all sorts of random ass movies, usually as a military dude. He's in all the Transformers movies, but he's usually a guy that talks like this and commands a room. Uh, but he's one of the scouts that's like, I don't understand what you're doing, Billy. He's one of those dudes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, my One of my favorite lines from those guys uh, is when they go to recruit Chris Pratt. And it's one of the times you heard me laugh on the plane. Uh, and he's like, I don't know how to play f- first base. And Brad Pitt, Billy Bean goes, it, it, it's it's super easy, super simple. Tell him. And he leans over to the other guy and the other guy. It's incredibly difficult. <laughs> <laughs> It's so fucking funny. This movie's funny. <laughs> like the line where um, Jonah Hill, when he's on the first day on the job at the Oakland A's and Brad Pitt goes, I told you to, he ta- tosses him the packet and he goes, I told you to do a breakdown of three players last night. And he's like, yeah, I know. And he's like, How many did you do? And he 47. And there's a beat. Brad Pitt's just reading if the camera stays on Jonah Hill. And he goes, 54. I don't know why I, I, don't I, don't know know why I just lied because <laughs> I do that. Like dude, when you lie about something that doesn't matter at all, it's just like you're almost knee jerk reaction is to lie. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> How many Cokes did you drink? Two, <laughs> one. I don't know why. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> like, I don't know why I said that. I don't know why. It's so fucking. And the fact that Brad Pitt plays it is just like a, a bemusement uh, constantly at this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny. Yeah. I mean, I wish in a weird way, I do wish the movie was more of them together because they are together a fairly decent amount. But I, I, those are my favorite scenes are when the two of them are together. Yeah, they're buds. Or like when they're in, they go into the room. It's it's Jonah Hill's first time in the the meeting with all the other. What do you call those guys? Agents or um, recruiters? Yeah, they're recruiters. recruiters. You're talking with the old farts that are talking. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're scouts. The, the scouts. That's it. That's the word I'm thinking of. Thank you. Um, just every time he like snaps his fingers and points to Jonah Hill. Oh, that's and great. He answers him. <laughs> do, do you want me to? Do you want me to talk now, guys? Yes. You better start answering me, or I'm going to keep pointing to him. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, but what I think philosophically, this movie's fascinating, and I'm going to paint a picture for you here. Paint see it. what you think. Paint it. I like because arts. The movie wants you to think that the Oakland A's are the underdogs, right? And in this arena against people like the Red Sox and the Yankees, they are. Their their yearly budgets are 80, 90 million dollars less. So they can take players like Damon and Giambi from the A's and and also first draft picks, right? Um, This movie's doing a lot all at the same time. So the Oakland A's are the underdogs. This is an underdog story about changing the game, adapting because we don't have the money. We still wanna, we need to get creative to succeed, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also a legitimate story about changing the way everything's done in a way that costs people jobs. And they say this in the movie, like they're not worried about you being wrong and you being right. What they're really scared of is that if you're right, you know, you're gonna take their jobs away, right? Mm And so in many ways, it's about embracing new technologies and new ways of thinking. It's a movie that wants you to root for using a spreadsheet instead of a human being to decide what's going to work. It's a movie that probably would argue for using AI mm-hmm. to make movies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's kind of gross. If you like take a step back for what's going on in our culture today, mm-hmm. um, you know, Billy Bean would be using chat GPT all day <laughs> <laughs> and we'd be beating the shit out of him. Uh, and so I think Please don't beat the shit out of him. <laughs> I use chat GPT all day. <laughs> Well, it's a huge thing right now. Like when we were at South by Southwest, it was a really heartening moment for me because every day that you would use a pre-roll from the festival and then uh, South by Southwest is also a huge music festival, but it's also like a big tech conference. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so one of the days, like the fourth day we were there, the pre-roll was a bunch of people talking positively about artificial intelligence and really dumb pool quotes too, like, in a way, all of these are going to take your jobs. Yeah. It was that it was, one of them was like, in a way, utilizing artificial intelligence makes us more human. 
And, but anyway, the audience is 1200 people in this Paramount theater, 1200 people Boo! Boo! throughout the entire pre-roll. It was a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> they were getting amped. Yeah. Like, Oh my God, they might riot and because then, of this thing. The first time it happened twice that day and it happened both times because with different crowds. But the first time at the end, when it started wrapping up and the South by Southwest logo was coming up and some guy way in the back went, fuck you. <laughs> 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 it just made it funnier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like artists are very passionately against artificial intelligence and being utilized in that way. Um, and I just thought it, that's what I was thinking of this time on that plane coming home watching this. Like it's it's a very similar thing, you know, because what what Billy's doing makes complete sense, like you said, but it's it's also kind of gross. You know what I mean? Like, I don't fucking care how fast you run, how hard you hit. 36% of the time you get to first base. So I want you. I don't. I don't like that. That's not who I am as a person. I'm a, I'm a romantic type guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So now, yeah, the guys that they showed were saying dumb shit. Like he is an ugly girlfriend. That means he has no confidence. Right. But mm -hmm. there's also a lot of people who just been playing baseball for 40 years yeah. and wanted their job was to look at people and see if they could be developed into talent. And that, you know, it's a human job that they were going to take a spreadsheet and fire. Uh, so yeah, like everything about that, I hate. But like, I love this movie and I, like, cause it does an effective job from a script standpoint it's, of painting them as underdogs. It's so weird to me though. Cause like sports, at least to me has always been a statistic thing. Like I have a baseball I have, specifically is hugely statistical. I, I have a nephew who like, um, it's so strange. Like I, I wouldn't, I don't want to, I'm not going to call him dumb or anything, but he's, he, if you talk to him, he, he just seems like a regular, like, man, I just love doing my thing and chilling out. But if you like bring up sports, he has like this encyclopedic memory where he can just, oh, so-and-so was a a such-and-such such for the Dallas whatevers and he got this point average and this, and like he, like that all is like tucked in there. So for me, sports has always been like this very aggregated um, st statistic-based thing. And so when it was just kind of like, oh, you guys didn't recruit people based off their stats initially or you just looked at him like i like the way he throws a ball like to me that just seems so backwards and like i don't like i understand what you're saying about the ai thing because I, I think that's that is 100 percent true but also to to that point like i also feel like well yeah why wouldn't you go from if, if your thing is a a statistic based sport why wouldn't you look at the statistics to influence your decisions? I, and it kind of goes to the Billy Bean story, which is his thing where like he maybe wasn't necessarily the greatest and he wasn't that the, the, the movie paints him this way. I don't know if this is true at all, but the movie paints him as like, maybe he was this guy that seemed to have it all, but his stats weren't there. And then when he got to the major leagues, he wasn't there. And like, so he has this very sort of like antagonistic view of scouts because yeah, they sold his life. They sold him this false bill of goods. Like you could be the star kid. But yeah. then like when he didn't show up in the way that his, maybe his stats would have shown, um, they kind of cast him aside and he wasn't, you know, he just treated like shit and he lost out on going to Harvard and all this stuff Stanford or Stanford. Thank you. And then, uh, uh, Jonah Hill's character was like, yeah, I wouldn't have drafted it. I thought you'd have been a ninth round draft. Yeah. And that's uh, why he hires him. Cause yeah. he was honest with him. And that's what he wanted to hear. Cause mm -hmm. at that point he would have turned him down and went to college. Yeah. Um, and Robin Wright obviously remarried a very wealthy man um, based on like the house that he's in and stuff like that. Um, so I think I thought about that too. That man is a lovely person. I mean, <laughs> he's trying to be so hard to be a good stepdaddy. That dude's trying so hard. He's so nice. Brad Pitt isn't giving him Just no giving room. him so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, hey, man, I'm so excited to hear. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where's the snacks? Yeah. I'm Brad Pitt. I'm going through my you snacky got her a cell age. phone. It's something maybe both parents should discuss. Oh, absolutely. We could all discuss that right now. Nah, her and I will discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like a maybe secondhand embarrassment filled. Um, I see what you're saying. And I wish Andy was here because that's what, where we are uh, useless because yeah. I'm sure there's a categorical difference into what is being discussed Um and the method that's being employed in this movie versus just looking at RBIs and, uh, you know, batting averages. They always did that. They always have. But specifically, the method that's being utilized here um, would be known by Andy and yeah. how things changed. Because so what's it called? Saber or something? Saber metrics. Saber metrics. Yeah, baby. Mm. Mm. Lightsaber? Sounds like like the a corporation that Spider-Man would fight in the MCU. 
Oh and no, Sabermetrics, they created a new supervillain. It's funny, like it was invented by what this guy that worked at like a was it like a hot dog factory or some shit? Yeah, they like a bean factory. On that guy. Like he was an economist, but he worked at a hot dog factory <laughs> like a tool. <laughs> um yeah, I love this movie, man. I, I watched it for this third time, second, third time a couple of years ago and was like, this is a fucking good. It's when it hit me like, fuck it. I'm giving this five stars. And, and then watching it on the plane, I was like, yeah, good choice. Yeah, yeah. Five stars. This is like a social network to me. Like it's that good. Like the 2010s, like fucking bangers mm -hmm. coming out. And when I saw that lineup at the Oscars, I was like, oh, pff, bunch of turds. <laughs> and then Moneyball. <laughs> and no Fucking love for... War Horse? <laughs> well, I, I'm a girl with a dragon tattoo apologist as well. So it made me upset that that was like out that year and just got like a special effects throwaway nom or something. Nothing else. And yeah. we never got the other two movies. Yeah. You guys let me down not watching that movie in a the theater. Why would you do that to him? I don't know. Why would you guys do that to Chris? This episode was sponsored by BetterHelp. Folks, it's 2024. What does everybody do in the new year? They make resolutions. They set goals. How about we don't do that? I mean, you can. It's obviously nice to have goals, but it's also a good exercise to focus on things that you like about yourself. You know, not making all those high pressure goals that you might fail at and just feel worse. You can set smaller goals. And I think therapy can be a good way to access things that you enjoy about your life and focusing on the positive, the gratitude. And BetterHelp is a good way to do that. If you've never given BetterHelp a try, it's therapy that's entirely online. You can do it all from your home and access a therapist by filling out a questionnaire. And if you end up not liking that therapist, you can switch. Again, along with the theme of this ad, uh, no pressure whatsoever. They're not going to have their feelings hurt by it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash streaming things. Spring is just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So how about we spring into action and give a special shout out to all of the patrons who keep the lights on over here at Streaming Things. And I want to give a special shout out to our super patrons for the month of March. Thank you. Stanton Valentino, Maddlestat, Bryce Coppin, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Sven. 7, Jay Scramo, Bloth Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Jason Hawkins, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Road, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things and let's get back to the show. Are you ready to try to do our best to kind of recap some of the things that happened in this film? Uh, sure, we can try. Well, it opens up at the end of the previous season of the Oakland A's, right? Uh, they've they've won a, a bunch of games, but they get knocked out by the Yankees. The and Yankees. The, the Yanks in the playoffs. Uh, and Billy Bean is extremely disappointed. I hate to lose. I hate to lose more than I like winning. There's a difference. <laughs> That's a good line. There's a bunch mm -hmm. of good lines, man. Uh, and so now several good players are taken off of their team. Uh, Johnny Damon, Jason Giambi, uh, and Jason Isringhausen. And so they're going to be ass out, face yeah. up. Yeah, because he's saying like, basically, we're a farm system for the New York Yankees because mm -hmm. we can make these guys stars, kind of train them, like get them while they're new, teach them the way of the the major leagues. And as soon as they're successful, the Yankees swoop in with their 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 pocketbooks and take these guys away from them. And again, Andy being here would be neat because he'd be like, it's funny because Giambi uh, in 2000, you know. <laughs> Why are you giving Andy the George Lucas voice? <laughs> I'm just in the habit. I really like numbers. <laughs> I, th I like numbers more than people. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Bean ends up uh, trying to find some. And by the way, when he went to talk to the team owner, I thought the owner was really nice. Even though he wouldn't give him extra budget money, he was <laughs> yeah. just like, you're doing a good job, man. Yeah. You know, like, I it'll, love you. it'll be fine. 
I, I didn't get the impression that that guy was a baseball owner. It just seemed like he was like, I don't, what do you want from me? I don't know, man. Can you just let me just do my, my day job here? I just play Galaga. That's all I do. <laughs> you want more money? God, oh, man. Oh, jeez. He's Morty. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just Morty Aww. from Rick and Morty. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, oh, Billy Bean. <laughs> <laughs> Just get your shit together, Billy. Come get your get your shit. Get a bag. Put it put it in the bag. Get it together. Put it in a backpack. I don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the, he doesn't. He's not able to get a higher budget. And even though he sticks his ground, I can't leave here with that. Uh, so he's trying to find some replacement players and do assembling a competitive team for the next year. Um, yeah, but payroll not having it right. So he goes to the Cleveland Indians to discuss. I think trading one of their some of their players in person. That was a little bit of a jump scare. Didn't yeah. Ha- haven't they changed that logo? They the have. Years? What is, what's it now? It's like I the don't Cleveland know. Uh, players. It's like a kind of a lame name. <laughs> no, that, you're thinking of the 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 Washington Redskins oh. football team. Oh, okay. They're the Guardians now? What, we, I thought they were just the football players. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, Washington. We are it's showing a fo- our it's a, sports It's a football knowledge. team, right? <laughs> Washington football team. Yeah. Um, commanders. Ah, the, the Washington Commanders. That sounds cool. We are the Clit Commanders. <laughs> Trust me, we know where to find it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Jane, Silent Bob, Strike Back. You thought I just randomly said Clit th- Commanders? I thought, I thought you did. And I you thought still I was, yes handed me. I was. I was. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Oh my God. The 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 Cleveland Indians were changed to the Cleveland Guardians. Oh, you're correct. Wow. Uh, I knew a sports. <laughs> I knew a sports. Ooh, I am vindicated. You ruined it by saying I knew a sports. I knew it, but I did know it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so he goes to the Cleveland Indians and there he sees like that Jonah Hill is being like listened to by all these old fucks. And he's very intrigued. And I love the part where he's just like, what is going on right now? Uh, so he's denied being able to b- purchase one of the players out in the hallway at the cubicles. He's like, who the fuck are you? I'm um, Peter Brand. I don't give a fuck what your name is. Who I, are you? I love that shot where Peter's in his cubicle and he just sees Billy Bean like walking towards him. That <laughs> yeah. whole long, oh shit, he's coming. He's go, oh no, he's talking to me. He's so awkward. It's great. <laughs> love it. He ends up calling him out into the garage because he feels kind of sheepish about it. Oh, I'm really sorry. Do you want to know the joke that made me laugh real hard? Yes. It's in an earlier scene. It's when he's like talking to the the other scouts like, what's the problem? And they all can't figure it out. At one point, he says like, you're all talking about which one has a better hair like Fabio. And he moves on. Oh, but then at the end of the. Who's Fabio? Who's Who Fab- does he play for? Oh, I think he plays for. He's, I think he's a shortstop from Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you can see in the corner of the screen in that moment. Billy just going, oh, yes. like he's not, it's not worth his time to explain who Fabio is yeah. or like fix that. He's the, just on something else. These old fucks. <laughs> uh, but Brand says that he is a Yale economics graduate and that's what he does. And this is his first job anywhere ever. But he's also a huge baseball fan, apparently. And I guess he read the book by the guy, the uh, guy, the, the bean factory guy, not Billy Bean. I don't know what factor it is. It's not a bean. Fa- it's not a hot dog. Hot dog factory. It's something, man. Do hot dogs get made in a factory? I guess they do. Uh, where where else would they be made? I don't know. Some lady, I in feel the like. kitchen. Just twisting up all them sticks. Yeah. Oh, honey, get in here. We're just, <laughs> we just making the hot dogs. Come on in. Get your, wash your hands. Catch some gloves. We're going to be doing a lot of this. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Come on in. But wash your hands first. <laughs> I want to go in there. We're going to make them golden brown and put them between two buns. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's an institution. <laughs> I sound like that guy from Family Guy. <laughs> you do. <laughs> mm, my dog. <laughs> we call it dogging. <laughs> I dig it a dog. <laughs> but anyway, Bean likes his radical ideas. His speech about uh, how to assess a player's value and how everyone else is overpaying and it's antiquated, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so then he just, we talked about this earlier, but he tests his theory by asking whether or not Brand would have drafted him. Like, okay, using what you know and what you think baseball's philosophy should be, would you have drafted me? I'm sure you Googled me. When I, what if he didn't know? What if he called that? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I know you went home. You Googled me. You know my stats. Sir, I really I, didn't. I didn't. I don't even know who you, who is this? Who is Billy Bean? <laughs> should I know you? You are such a little part of my day. <laughs> 
what the fuck is going on right now? I'm hanging out in Cleveland, having a good time, said no one ever. Um, and so he says, no, I wouldn't have picked you uh, in the first round. I would have chosen you in the ninth round, maybe. And that's when he's like, okay, you're in. Pack your shit. I just bought you. <laughs> Apparently you can just draft like administrative employees yeah. as well. Yeah. Might as well. Yeah. You can negotiate not? anything. Yeah. That's true. I wonder how much. Because technically he becomes like, what's the role he gives him? Like assistant general manager. Assistant general manager. That's a big title. Yeah. It's probably a huge bump mm -hmm. in the pay. Like that cold well, hard quiche. It's Oakland A's money that they're poor. That's true. <laughs> you're, you're only making $1 million Honestly, a year. sir, we pay in peanuts, mm -hmm. literal peanuts. And also a million dollars a year. But do they house him? Like how I've never had a corporate job where they would like move you states. Like that's how it has to be usually, right? It, like I we give you a house. I think it depends on the company. Like yeah. some people probably give you some sort of housing. Others might give you like a stipend to help you f like live in a hotel until you find a place or yeah. something. It just depends. I think and he's a situation. nerd. He's at work early. Already got his office together. He did 50, f 47 reports. I'm sorry, 53. He lied. I don't know why I lied. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So Billy Bean was a major league player before becoming a general manager. Uh, and the scouts had considered him a phenomenal player. So that's kind of, he's got a bone to pick with scouts in your, general. Your boy has five tools. He's got all five of them. Mm. Most players only get one or two. Your boy has all We're five. We're trying to develop a third tool, right? I'm a tool. We're going to listen to a lot of tool in the car when we drive to the airport. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anima? I think it's a great, <laughs> great album. I'm more of a lateralist guy. Preach. And some deep tool knowledge you guys didn't know I had. I'm a big tool fan. So take that <laughs> to the bank. You showed him. Uh, yeah. So any who's him, he hires him. Uh, the team scouts are very dismissive of and then at, at, outright hostile toward Brand's new ideas for how to scout players. Uh, they want to use their intuition, right? Uh, but no, all they're using is on base percentage, Steve. OBP, baby. Are you down with OBP? Yeah, you know me. I do know that about you, right? So they're trying to find players with a high OBP. And I love that whole where he's pointing at him and stuff. Like instead of trying to find the next Giambi, let's find three people to replace the amount of times Giambi got on base because runs are what win games. I've mm -hmm. had the runs, not a big fan. No, but baseball, it's a good thing. I mostly have the runs at home. <laughs> that's home true. I call them home runs. Well, that's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I call them home runs. Well, that's lucky, Steve. Um, yeah, so he he finds what they call undervalued players with far more potential, right? Uh, that they can actually afford only a couple hundred grand each for these motherfuckers. Um, and sometimes they don't even play the position that they're trying to hire him for. No. Yeah. So they're talking about Hatterberg character, which is Chris Pratt. And uh, they're saying like, oh, he's great at this. He gets on base. He gets on base. And then finally one guy's like, I think you're overlooking a real big issue here. He's replacing our uh, first baseman. Yeah. And he, he was Damon. And he doesn't play first base. He's a, a, he was a catcher originally, right? Am mm -hmm. I remembering that correctly? He was a catcher with a, a with a bunk elbow. Mm -hmm. Can't throw anymore. He's got nerve damage. He's throwing from home plate to second, which is something that a catcher needs to be able to do, is far. Mm -hmm. He can throw, just so you know. Like, it's not like he like, takes a ball and goes, eh. <laughs> I, I'm glad you said that because th there were there was a couple times in this conversation where like, oh, that guy, he has nerve damage. Oh, that guy, his legs are gone. But like, it, that never comes up yeah. ever in the rest of the movie. So I was just kind of like, what's wrong with these guys? They that, seem fine. That's all that means is as a catcher, he's fucking toast, you know, because gotcha. a catcher's job is to throw to all three of the bases lightning quick and his elbow just can't do that. But yeah. as a first baseman, all he has to do is scoop up the ball, sometimes throw it to second, which is a lot closer than home to second. You yeah. know what I mean? That's doable. Hmm. Okay. But he's never done that before. I'm glad you explained that to me because that was lost on me for sure. It's extremely difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely it's super simple. difficult. Um, but yeah, so they, they're looking for players with a high OBP. Uh, the scouts are super pissed about this, uh, but it's stuff that they can afford, right? So Bean's all in on Brand's theory, hires the players that Brand picks, um, and including like the weird ass, because uh, he, he pitches funny. Is the only thing wrong with him, right? Yeah. Uh, Chad Bradford. I love that little bounce he did. They, they showed a couple of clips of the guy pitching and he would like bounce it off the ground. Like that was cool. Isn't that neat? That was really cool. I didn't know you could, that was allowed. Oh yeah. That's sweet. You could bounce it off anything. If I saw, if I saw, <laughs> bounce your penis off that ball. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, if I saw that as a little kid, like if I went to a baseball game and there's a pitcher that like just always bounced the ball, I would have been like, I'm obsessed with being able to do that. I'm going to try to it's do like that. It's like skipping rocks on the river. Yeah. And do it all day. 
Yeah. And they were also like, oh, he, he looks funny when he pitches. We don't want that guy. I think he looks cool. It's cool as hell. If it, imagine that ball was a ninja star. How cool does that look? <laughs> it's going in there. Yeah. For damn sure. So <laughs> after the free agent stuff, we find uh, we meet Art Howe, the coach played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, is also opposed to this bullshit that Billy Bean's doing. Billy Bean. Why won't you make another baby year? Billy? Why won't you extend my contract another year? Go outside, nerd. <laughs> Touch grass. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Walton Goggins had played Billy Bean. Oh, Billy Bean, that would have been great. Go outside, nerd. Touch grass. <laughs> yeah, see, he wants another contract, which, by the way, this scene is was read differently by me nowadays as well, because I'm like, he's got 100% valid points. Think about it. Again, Billy's our protagonist. They're the underdogs. But really, Billy's their boss yeah. who fires people all the time and doesn't hang out with them so he can make that easier. Mm -hmm. And the general manager is just saying, hey, I only have a one-year contract. It makes me feel like you're wanting to fire me next year. Let's talk about that. I'm standing up for myself. Yeah. He, valid points. Very valid points. And our points. main character is just like, not right now, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I just think it's interesting because ultimately what I'm trying to say is everything about this movie that you're rooting for is the bad guy in most real life situations. But because the script is so good, I'm for it. Mm. I'm for it. Um, but anyway, yeah, tensions are high all around. They hire a bunch of people, um, including, ironically, Giambi's younger brother, who like likes to... This guy likes to party. He likes to motorboat boobies he and likes, do shots a lot. He's going to Vegas all the time. He's yeah. smoking some reefer. Yeah, the Mary Jehuji. He, he's going to Vegas with Mary Jane all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, there, there's this whole extended bit throughout the next sequence of them losing, and everybody's blaming... Uh, Billy mm -hmm. and his new method and because he ends up having to fire that the main asshole scout uh, who's basically like fuck you and he's like oh now you're oh, fired now you're fired <laughs> Grady I know he's like I'm not going to fire you eat dicks you know <laughs> <You're> like, <he's, laughs> well now I have to and then he goes and he's like Kabuto what do you do uh, I, I work here oh congratulations you're head scout yeah <laughs> just some random guy Again, that's dick to the other scouts. They're like, why not promote one of the scouts that's been doing that for 20 years? <laughs> I mean, it's funny in the scene, but in a business setting, you'd be pissed, you know? Sure. He, Billy Bean's giving pizza party uh, <laughs> for the team. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Throughout this movie. But any hoozle. Well, the way uh, he likes to snack, I'd, I'd believe it. Yeah, he fires the head scout, but also, like, there's this whole bit where they keep losing because nobody's actually listening to him about how to employ this method. And it's mm -hmm. it's unfortunate. There's tension in it. His daughters can frequently worried. Are you going to get fired? Yeah. Just don't read the newspapers or watch the news or talk to people. It's fine. It's fine. It's a funny scene. Oakland A's are fine. But because Hal keeps putting Pena on first base. And again, Philip Seymour Hoffman is so good at this. He goes in there. Uh, Pena is not only the best first baseman that we have. He's the only first baseman that we have. <laughs> 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 so fucking funny. Uh, so he just refuses to put Chris Pratt's uh, Hatterberg at first base because he's a catcher. To him, you know? He's like, fuck that. This is weird. Um, so eventually, finally, he's like, I'm going to swing my dick all the way around. And he just trades Pena who's a great player that they actually need mm -hmm. because that way Howe will be forced to use Hatterberg, right? And he trades the other, uh, Giambi as well, which is another decent player, one of the only decent players on paper that they have Yeah, uh, just to force him to use his new recruits and use his system. Mm -hmm. Even Brand's like, you shouldn't do this, dude. And his whole point is, it's like it's something that they're going to be able to use to fire you. Like this is like active mismanagement. Whereas before we were just trying, we were trying crazy stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And I love that Billy Bean's response is like, you're being a bitch right now. We're all the way in. You know what I mean? There's only one, one way to do this. And again, that's why I love this movie because I'm an all the way in kind of guy. Yeah, that seems really fun because like, you're not playing Pena. And it's like, well, I, I I do the lineup. He's like, yeah, but you can't because uh, <laughs> uh, we traded him today. Yeah. Oh, hey, Jambi, get in here. Uh, we're, we're training you to so-and-so. Yeah, you can't play Jambi either. <laughs> and then the scene ends with Jonah Hill like, do you want the door closed? Yeah. <laughs> How do you not love this movie, dude? It's so good. Because I, I, I get, I, I explain myself. <laughs> it's so it's good. It's over my, the, 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 that whole, the humor's funny, but a lot of the, I think the humor is lost on me. That scene being like, do you want this open? Or like, it's so That's good. hilarious, yeah. <laughs> After like, the, and when it cuts to Hoffman's face, just like. Because he's still processing that. He fucking hates this kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Jonah just can't read the room. 
Um, but anyway, uh, where are we at here? So they're, they're eventually, once he's forced to start using his recruits, things start to work. And then they, they win 20. And again, I wish Andy was here. I have no idea how crazy this is. But I, I, I have to believe when the movie tells me fucking wild yeah. that they <laughs> that they won 20 consecutive games. Yeah, they set a world record. Did they set the record? Or did they tie the record with the they, uh, they tied it with like 19 or whatever, I guess. Oh, OK, um, let's see. Let's, we got, I thought they tied we got it Google. at 20 world record. But I could be mistaken for most yeah. games won in, in a, a row. row. Baseball. Boom, boom. Boom. What's it coming up? Okay. What's the computer saying? Well, now it's 26 games. Oh, shit. uh, By the Giants. Wait, wait, wait. What? The Giants? Isn't that a football team? (laughs) Stop. (laughs) (laughs) I need you to stop. It's the the 1916 Giants did 26 games. The Guardians did 22 in 2017. The Cubs did 21 in 1935 and the A's did 20 in 2002. So why were we so excited about them hitting a number? I think it's the first time it had happened since like the thirties, the 1947 Yankees were the ones that got 19. So my, I guess it was the biggest in like the, in like 60 or 70 years. You know what I mean? Wow. I'm so confused. I thought it was the record. I'm so confused. Interesting. We're getting close to a record. Athletics. If you've seen the movie version of Moneyball, then you can probably visualize this one. Even if you weren't watching at the time, Billy Bean's feisty Oakland underdogs began the streak in third place in the AL West, four and a half games out, and finished it with a three and a half game lead. I don't even know what they're saying. Going on to win the division. Each of the final three victories during this stretch were walk-offs. Don't even know what that means. Culminating in a wild 12-11 victory over the Royals in which the A's blew an early 11-0 lead before winning in the bottom of the ninth. That was a cool. Dad, you're not going to jinx it because he's super, super. The baseball then, people are very superstitious. I oh, know yeah. that. My uh, my sister and my nephew are huge Cincinnati Reds fans, like enormous Cincinnati Reds fans. And they're superstitious in that they won't let my mom watch any games because apparently if my mom watches a Reds game, they all, they always lose. She, she must watch a lot of games. I know she must be watching those things constantly. <laughs> like, mom, get off the TV. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm begging you to stop watching. But, that, but that's been the joke for a long time. It's like, mom, you can't watch those games. You're not allowed. Yeah, my dad would change the channel when the Bengals were losing and stuff, and check it back later. Like, I gotta stop watching. It's going. It's going south. Dad, I don't think. I don't think that matters. He goes in the next day like, I'm sorry, guys. That one's on me. I was watching. I was. I watched it. I, I should have stopped <laughs> watching it, but I, I, I curiosity killed that cat. Sorry, guys. That one's on me. <laughs> God, I knew better. Uh, but yet, yeah, so there's anyway, a lot of superstition in, in sports in general. Yeah. It, oh, it's the American League record, not the in, not the uh, uh, MLB record. I'm so confused. Yeah, there's two leagues. I know that. There's like NL and AL. What? Yeah. So what's within what's the big lead that has the, 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 the world series. What's that league? The winner of each of the leagues. Oh, okay. You goofball. You made it seem like there was a whole other league. No, they're all MLB major league okay. B ball. You said MLB and then you said another one. So I thought like, there's another thing that that's not the MLB. Yeah. There's every sport has like these branches of the country that play together yeah. predominantly. And then the, the winners of those. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like war. <laughs> we will kill. <laughs> we will make the Cincinnati's know? run red with the red's blood. That's what I'm saying. It's, either way, it's really important. You get the context, and you know they blow the 11-0 lead. But then they keep doing this thing where Billy Bean's also seemingly interacting with the players a lot more. Because before, here's a guy that would never even like hang out or talk to the players at all. Because Art refuses to like enact the method, so he ends up having yeah. to kind of coach them. Yeah, and he's trying to do shitty little inspiration speeches, and he's trying to coach them with Pete and everything. And like when he goes to talk with David Justice, who the seven million dollar guy, the line you talked about earlier, yeah. he's like, "You can set an example, man. Like I'm just trying to milk every last little ounce of baseball left in you, and you're trying to stay in the game. Mm-hmm. Let's have an honest relationship." And he's like, "That's fair." Uh, but it, oh, that's another scene that where you caught me like embarrassing us on the airplane was the Chris Pratt thing where he's like. Uh, 
what's your biggest fear, man? What are you so nervous about? And it's like, just the ball coming at me ever. And he's like, <laughs> good one. <laughs> Seriously though. And he's like, yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared to death of that ball. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> it's, yeah. You didn't know what to say to that. It's so funny. Um, but any who's all, yeah. So I, but by the way, the, uh, the guy who played David justice was a real professional baseball player who played in the minor leagues. Um, I forget his name, but he, they called him young justice because he looked so much like David justice. Huh. And they ended up playing David justice and Moneyball. Ha! Well, apparently that wasn't the original plan was all the baseball players would play themselves. Yeah. Soderbergh wanted to use real baseball players. Yeah. And uh, they ended up hiring actors. Always a, always a good choice. Always a good choice. Usually. But it's fun whenever they like cut to like actual game footage. They never, they almost never show the A's sometimes. Yeah. It's always the other team reacting to and what I the love A's did. The, the, it got nominated for best editing Oscar because I, I see that, you know, it was some slick ass editing. The way this movie moves, like I said, it moves at such a clip Yeah, for how much material they get through. And, and uh, they, they, he goes to like six or seven baseball stadiums in this movie. And all of them are the Dodgers stadium. They just re redecorated. Redecorate it, yeah. Except I think they really went to fin Fenway Park, didn't they? Is that the one where it's raining? In Boston, yeah. Yeah, they went to that one. They only had a day to film there. And that's because, that's why they have the umbrellas because it was raining that day. And they're oh, like, well, yeah. we only have a day, so we got to shoot this, yeah. Fenway Park's a busy place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he was offered $12.5 a year to, to play, you know, because his method works even though he didn't win. Uh, and he turned it down. And I, always, I remember calling Andy the first time I watched this movie because I was like, that fucking sucks, dude. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I mean, did the A's ever win? And he's like, no. And I was like, oh, but the Red Sox, the place that wanted to hire him did like the next year. And he's like, yeah. And it was the first win that they had in like a hundred years. You know? Yeah. <laughs> the curse was broken. Yeah. And he's like, oh, he's like you're a loser, <laughs> dad. Like that's the whole thing. Like it makes it more romantic when I rewatch it now, though. It's just like, hopefully he's happy because he never does win. Is Billy Bean still doing his thing? As far as I know, uh, he might be like a piece of shit or something too. Like I don't he, know anything about him. Billy Bean, real life. <laughs> Billy Bean daughter came up uh, when I went to search that former executive vice president of the Oakland Athletics. Uh, let's find out a little trivia about Billy Bean. Let's do it. Right. Let's talk about personal life. Uh, Bean's first marriage was to Kathy Sturdivant. The couple has a daughter, Casey Bean. Bean is uh, married to Tara Bean, who was the wife that was in the movie. Ah. Uh, so Kathy Sturdivant would have been played by Robin Wright. They have twins, Braden and Tinsley. Twins? Yeah, that's right. That's all it says about that. Let's see here. Baseball career, playing front office career. How about that? Uh, under the ownership of Walter. Uh, okay. So he, <laughs> he, he became the GM in 1997. Uh, and that's when all this shit happens is early 2000s. Uh, he continued Alderson's crafting of the athletics into one of the most cost effective teams in baseball. See how unsexy that sounds. Cost that is effective teams in baseball. That's what the movie's about is how cost effective this man was mm -hmm. this man saved so much money for executives pockets isn't it beautiful it's beautiful see what i'm saying like i weep aaron sorkin's such a g for making that so sexy when all <laughs> it's the bad guys <laughs> I, I, it's the bean pinchers i don't know i also i also <laughs> think that you know people might come at me with pitchforks on this but i also think like uh, the spending in sports is like fucking out of this world. So it's like, if you can rein a little bit of that in, that's yeah, but, fine. But it's not like they donated the extras. <laughs> no, I know they're not. They but just kept it and bought I know they're not, and blow. But like also, I don't, I, it, whenever I hear like how much a, a, a sports player makes, I'm like, Jesus Christ, really? <laughs> it blows well, my mind. I, I, I know, I hear you. I agree with you. But I also, I think it's the same thing about actors. People are like, why is so-and-so getting... $20 million for this movie. It's because Captain Jagoff in the office that did nothing other than have the, you know what I mean? Like his daddy left him money to invest in movies is getting so much money for this. Yeah. That at least Robert Downey Jr. should get probably way more. Like percentage wise, it's ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just a matter of, of how much there is to be made off the product that you're hugely a part of. And, you know, billions of dollars is going through the football uh, industry. And so the players who are breaking their bodies down training, like, yeah, they only play a certain amount of games, but they're training all year. They're traveling all over the world. It's really hard for them to be parents and be husbands. That's why there's always divorces and all this mm -hmm. stuff. You know, Tom Brady got divorced because he wouldn't quit playing, uh, which is 
it was probably goofy of him. I and mean, he's got like 11 <laughs> and he's got like 11 Super Bowl rings. Hey, dude, you're fine. Yeah. Like, you did it. You, <laughs> you did, did it. the you thing. Did. What else do you want? Um, but yeah, I, I do think there's a, an extreme sacrifice and difficulty because you can say, hey, he gets $20 million a year to play a game. That must be nice. Sure. But yeah, I'm not one of those brutal people. game where he is like a 400 pound dude fucking slam him into the ground all day. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it, I, like, again, it's one of those things where like, I'm not one of those people that are like, Oh, we're playing it. Cause I do know there's like way more to it than that. Yeah. And you have to work really hard to be, to do that. And I'm sure a lot of that, I'm, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if the NFL was like, Oh, you know, but do they deserve like, you know, supermodels sitting on their face all day on a yacht <laughs> when people are in coal mines and yeah. our people are teachers and, you know, crafting the youth to become citizens and yeah. making 40 grand a year and struggling and freaking out. No. I right. get it. I get yeah. that. But the point is like, if they didn't have it, if they had less money, it just means Jag off in the box is keeping extra money. Well, I just, it's because I those mean, are the only two choices we have. Jag off in the box. Is <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite restaurants. The, the real <laughs> Jag off. I'll have a number one at Jag off in the box. <laughs> yeah. Jag off in the box is the real enemy here. Exactly. Yeah. The 1%. That's what I've been saying the whole time. So it's one of those. That's why I'm on this podcast. They ruin everything. They ruin society and most importantly, baseball. My Bernie Sanders is the one that smokes cigarettes. And, and mine is just over it. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Bernie. <laughs> I love Moneyball, but I see what Chris is saying. It's the oh, one. I believe the Kit Laser is the voice of our generation. <laughs> we just seek to him for our inspiration and mm. guidance. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Fuck um, you. <laughs> <laughs> so Moneyball, baby. We, we un inadvertently got to the end there. Uh, but uh, then there's that whole bit where he... <laughs> <laughs> Much like the ending of Moneyball, we got to the end there. <laughs> <laughs> we put in the tape from his daughter and we get the loser song that I love so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I love that movie. Amanda King and I are united in thinking this is one of our one of our greats of the 21st century. Listen, I don't think it's a bad movie. I no, feel no, like I'm not I came knocking off, you. I feel like I came off very negative. Hey, man. I just want to say, I don't think it's a bad movie. I just, it's 100% not made for me, and that's totally we just, okay. We just hopped off the mics from me saying, I don't really like Star Wars, but we're, you know, we're doing this. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I don't like that Star beom, Wars beom, either. Beom, beom, beom. I like that stuff. <laughs> Barreling through that. So tune in. Uh for more Star Wars stuff. Thank mm -hmm. you, Amanda mm -hmm. King, for forcing Steve to watch Moneyball. Yeah, thank you. He mostly thank you. had a good time, I and did. I loved it. We've got to go return some videotapes. My name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And this was Streaming Things. Happy streaming. Cops win. Cops win. <laughs>